What is going on everybody and welcome to another support vector machine from scratch tutorial as well as part 26 in our machine learning tutorial series where we left off we are building our own support vector machine and we are currently going to be working on the fitment section which is the training and it's also the optimization problem like basically the entire support vector machine is an optimization problem where all all we have to do is figure out what w and b is and then from there to classify as we've already written it is that classification right there it's just the sign of x dotted with w plus b super easy where x is the unknown feature set so we're going to work on the fitment and that's the optimization part and i just want to say right out of the gate this is not going to win you any you know mnist competition or <laughs> anything like that so uh, it's just meant to be a really simple example for how you could go about solving a convex problem but if you really want to know more about optimization there's other sources you should check out besides me i can't teach you optimization to any huge degree luckily i do have some sources for you uh, i'll just pull this down here so first of all we this is a convex optimization problem and stanford has this lovely gigantic book 730 pages pdf but you can just save it or whatever uh, and it's all on convex optimization so you can bebop around here and learn a bunch of cool interesting things and specifically you'd be looking for quadratic problems as well as uh, that lagrange uh, dual problem moving along i also want to draw your attention to the smo so we're going to be what we're going to be doing is extremely rudimentary and it's one of the earlier kind of ways of solving the problem but as you'll see here and maybe by the end too the larger your 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 data set the longer it's going to take to do the fitment process because you've got to you've got to check every variable to see does it suit the whole y sub i x i w plus b greater than or equal to one question that has to be applied to every single data sample or at least that's the theory where here with SMO, the idea is that you can kind of do it in a sort of batch system. But anyway, I just want to draw your attention to that. This is some information. Also, I think this is the maybe the original research paper on that question. Anyway, you can check those out. If I forget to put these in the description, uh, someone remind me and I'll add them there. I also hopefully we'll have them in the tutorial itself, the text version of this tutorial. Finally, I just also, we brought this up already too, but the CVX opt module, this is the page and stuff like that specifically for convex optimization. Sure enough, yeah, convex optimization. And what you'd be looking for here is something .qp probably. Um, anyway, we're not gonna be worried. I think it's convexops.solvers.qp possibly. Anyway, just drawing your attention to there are more sophisticated ways but the module of CVX Opt, I encourage you to download it and look at it yourself, the source code, and see what you think. So anyway, uh, moving this stuff out, let's get go ahead and uh, get started on this optimization. So first of all, to begin training, uh, or fitting and optimizing and all that fun stuff, we're going to first grab our data. So we're just going to say self.data equals data. So now the entire algorithm can reference data, which will be important when we go to visualize it. So self.data equals data and then we're gonna have we're gonna have this opt dict and I kind of already explained opt dict we called it I think mag or mags maybe anyway the opt dict is gonna be basically the following so you've got your dictionary and it's going to be the magnitude of W will be our key and then our values will just be a list where it's W and B okay that is how this dictionary will be populated it's gonna start off empty though I'm gonna get rid of this pass so now what we're going to do is we're going to define transforms and let's go ahead and just define them and I'll explain them but you probably figure it out before we get done if you've been following along so do this this and this okay so the transform and we'll just do negative one negative one and actually let's we'll do them in the same order so negative one one then negative one negative one and then one negative one okay so these transforms are what we're going to apply to the ve yeah the vector of w as we like step each time as again we've this has already been explained so i'm not going to spend too much time on it uh, but each time we have a vector we want to transform it by these or basically get the product of these all of these values same thing 
and and at eat for each step that we step down because for magnitude it doesn't matter if it's negative or positive because it's the great neutralizer of squared but when we go to get the dot product of something with a, a negative in b ver, or a negative let's say in, in um, x when we do that dot product will that negative make a huge difference absolutely just like the transform itself makes a difference now what we're going to do is kind of write a dirty function or a dirty for loop here I'm, I'm trying to think of a better way that i could possibly do it but we'll just we'll do this for now uh, this is going to be the reason why we're going to do this is so we can get maximum and minimum ranges so both for our uh, for our graph but then also for where we're going to start when we value when we start with a value for b and a value for w and start stepping we're going to use this information if you can think of a better way i'm all ears uh, this is just the best i can come up with on the fly for now so anyways we're going to say for yi in self dot data so i'm just going to i'll try to use as close to the fundamental names as we did before but yi is just your class then we're going to say for feature set in self dot data yi so we're referencing whoops yeah <laughs> yi uh so now we're, we're the feature sets now we're going to say for feature in feature set all data dot append feature and then we're, we're just going to say self dot max feature value equals max all data and then we're just going to basically copy this paste that and then rather than max now we're at min don't forget to change this to min and then we have our values and then we'll go ahead and all data equals none just so we're not holding that in memory again you're going to have to reference every single data point uh, as we go through so you don't want to have all data now we maybe what we could have done is iterated through the dictionary and somehow got the values without creating a new list i really i don't i'm not sure how you would do that honestly so anyway if you could do that like if you could get the max values without creating a new list somehow that would be important but again this is mo mostly meant to kind of give you some clarity on the whole optimization problem itself not so much that i really think anyone's going to take this code and and do a support vector machine at scale so anyways uh move it along now we're gonna have step sizes so what are going to be our step sizes and what is this? Well, let's first let me first write one. Self dot max underscore feature value times 0 0.01. So these, if you recall the beautiful pictures I drew for you, we you know you had the U, and then you take big steps first, right? And then once you've figured out what the minimum of all those big steps were, you'd go for a range around that minimum, and then you take smaller steps and smaller steps. So you're not taking pointless small steps. So first, what we're going to say is our step size is uh point uh not point zero one point one uh so big steps here so it's just whatever is that maximum feature value that's the size times basically point one that is the size of those original steps we're going to take so pretty big steps but then once we find a good value i'm going to go ahead and just copy this line copy and we'll paste two more paste paste once we find that value we're, we'll take uh, one percent steps and then once we find that value even smaller steps okay and we can you can continue stepping down there um after this point though like after this point you're really uh <laughs> it's, it's starting to get pretty expensive and we'll talk about that as we go but here is um point of expense i'll just i'll try to mark some of them as we go on but you'll see where we can tweak quite a few different things to either get a more accurate response or a quicker response depending and again that's mostly just so you can understand the problem of the svm optimization problem not so much that i like i said i don't think anyone's going to actually improve this one enough to be truly great but anyway that's one order or area for improvement also i'll just note each step can you thread these steps simultaneously like could you simultaneously run the, the step function here and then the step function here and here think about that but um we'll get there i guess so think about that for now and then because you know how that's going to happen so could that be threaded or multi-processed or whatever now after step sizes we're going to set a couple more kind of step and uh, other variables so first we're going to set, set b range multiple and we're going to say that's equal to five i'm just going to put a space there 
Um, some people complain about my white spaces. I kind of like to cl just clump things. I'm sorry. I think it makes it easier to read. Anyway, so <laughs> there's my white space. But feel free not to have white space if you don't want. B range multiple equals five. So this cost here, I'll say extremely expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we'll all maybe explain this one a little more as we go, but um, yeah, I guess I'll explain that more. But basically, B doesn't need to take as small of steps as W does. It doesn't have to be as precise. It doesn't. Have, it's not as valuable to get it as precise. Basically, so we're gonna multiply the step a bit. But not only does it not need to be as precise, it's also extremely expensive to to add that one. Although we could make it cheaper, and I'll explain, I'll explain why as we when we get into the thick of things. Uh, but for now, we'll just leave that there. And if if you're kind of fuzzy on that, don't worry. Uh, hopefully, it'll make more sense when we actually start using it. Now we're also going to do uh, b underscore multiple, and again that one will set to five. And mm, this one. I think we'll well, we'll leave this one alone for now, but we'll probably add more to it in a little bit. And then we're gonna have latest optimum, 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 and that's gonna be self dot max underscore feature underscore value times ten. Okay, so latest optimum is just going to be that starting base. Let's we'll call it the first element in vector w. So you'll see the first place where we kind of cut a corn a major corner is gonna be here where our vector w is going to have multiple like basically the same value for everything within the vector or the matrix or whatever you want to call it that's all going to be the same number it's actually still pretty darn accurate if, even though you're going to do that but that's the first major corner that we're going to cut uh is going to be is right there and really as far as the whole algorithm is concerned i actually think that's probably the the major the only major corner we're cutting uh mostly you're just going to save a lot of processing doing that but anyway so we'll leave that. So basically, once we find the largest number, we multiply it by 10, and we're going to say vector w is equal to that number, comma, that number, right? So anyway, you'll, again, you'll see what I mean once we get there. So those are the starting values. And then what we're going to do is begin the actual stepping process. So we're going to say for step in step sizes, what do we want to do? Well, first, we're going to start off. We gotta start somewhere with a W, so we're starting at you know at the, basically the top of that bowl, and we're about to drop the ball into that bowl, and we're gonna say that W is currently NP array, and it again is latest. Actually, let's uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. It's too easy to typo that. Latest optimum, latest optimum. So again, major corner is being cut there. So just keep that in mind. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an optimized value. So we're just gonna say optimized. And we're going to set that equal to false. And what we're going to do, and basically optimized will stay false until we basically have no more steps down to take. So again, this this is the crux of why um, we can do this because convex, right? This is why the convex problem is so valuable is we know <laughs> when we've been optimized. So that's really good. Otherwise, if you don't know, you, you might want to take 10 extra steps just to be safe, or you might want to take even more or huge steps or something like that. So anyway, um, optimized false. And then what we start is while not optimized, optimized. And I think we will pause it there. So I'll say pass. And we will continue on in the next tutorial where uh, we should be able to finish this, this, uh, this entire function, actually, or method, rather. Uh, so in the next tutorial, we'll actually finish it up and get this thing optimized. And then probably after that, we'll be able to graph it and maybe finish it. So we might have two more, maybe three more to finish up this entire SVM. So anyway, if you have any questions, comments, concerns up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.